the two lives, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Romans 9, 7, 8, 9. Ishmael and Isaac differed as to origin, and hence there was a difference in their nature, which showed itself in their lives and was chiefly seen in their relation to the promise. According to the birth, so will be the life which comes of it. In the case of a man who is only what he made himself to be, there will be only what nature gives him. But in the case of the man who is created anew by the Spirit of God, there will be signs following. Of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. As it is written, He that glorifieth, let him glory in the Lord. There will be in the newborn man that which the new life brings with it. In the natural man there will be nothing of the kind. Ishmael exhibited certain of the natural characteristics of Abraham, joined with those of his slave mother. He was a princely man like his father, and inherited the patriarch's noble bearing. But Isaac had the faith of his father, and was in the succession as to holy inward spiritual life. As the heir of the promise, Isaac remained with his father, Abraham, while Ishmael is forming camps of his own in the wilderness. Isaac seeks alliance with the olden stock in Mesopotamia, but Ishmael's mother takes him a wife out of Egypt which was very natural, since she came from Egypt herself. Like will to like, Isaac meditated in the field at eventide, for his conversation was with sacred things. But Ishmael contended with all comers, for he minded earthly things. Meditation is not for the wild man, whose hand is against every man, and every man's hand against him. Isaac surrendered himself as a sacrifice to God, but you see nothing of that kind in Ishmael. Self-sacrifice is not for Ishmael. He is rather a killer and a slayer than a lamb that presents itself to God. So you shall find that if you are religiously trained and tutored, and become pious, as they call it, and yet are not renewed in heart, nor visited by the Holy Spirit, you will not live the secret life of the child of God. You may show many of the outward marks of a Christian. You may be able to sing, and to pray, and to quote scripture, and perhaps to tell some little bits of imaginary experience. But, you must be born again to know in very deed and truth the fellowship of the saints, communion in secret with the living God, and the yielding of yourself to him as your reasonable service. The child of promise abides with God's people and counts it his privilege to be numbered with them. The child of the promise feels that he is in the best company when no man can see or be seen, but when the great invisible draws near to him and holds converse with him, the child of the promise, and he only is able to go up to the top of Moriah, there to be bound upon the altar and to yield himself up to God. I mean 
by this last that only he who is born of the spirit will yield himself wholly to god and love the lord better than life itself your nature and conduct will be according to your origin and therefore i pray that you may begin aright so that as you profess to be a child of the kingdom you may prove to be a true-born heir ishmael who was born after the flesh the child of the bondwoman must always bear the servile taint the child of a slave is not free-born ishmael is not cannot be what isaac is the child of the free woman now mark i do not say that ishmael ever desired to be like isaac i do not say that he felt himself to be a loser by differing from isaac but indeed he was so the man who is laboring for self-salvation by his own doings feelings and self-denials may be proudly ignorant of his servile state he may even boast that he was born free and was never in bondage to any and yet he spends his whole life in servitude he never knows what liberty means what content means what delight in god means he wonders when men talk about full assurance of faith he judges that they must be presumptuous he has scarcely time to breathe between the cracks of the whip he has done so much but he must do so much more he has suffered so much but he must suffer so much more he has never come into the rest which remaineth for the people of god for he is born of the bondwoman and his spirit is ever in bondage on the other hand he that is born of the free woman and understands that salvation is of the grace of god from first to last and that where god has given his grace he does not take it back for the gifts and callings of god are without repentance such a man accepting the finished work of christ and knowing his acceptance in the beloved rest in the lord and rejoices exceedingly his life and his spirit are filled with joy and peace for he was born free and he is free yea free indeed does my reader understand the freedom of the child of god or is he still in servitude under the law afraid of punishment afraid of being sent away into the wilderness if you are in this latter case you have not received the promise or you would know that such a thing could not be to isaac the child of the promise the heritage belongs and he abides forever without fear of being cast out those that are born as ishmael was according to the flesh and whose religion is a matter of their own power and strength mind earthly things as ishmael did only those that are born from above through the promise according to faith will like isaac mind heavenly things see how the naturally religious man minds earthly things he is very regular at his place of worship but while he is there he thinks of his business his house or his farm does he enjoy the worship of god not he there is a sermon does he receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save his soul not he he criticizes it as if it were a political harangue. He gives his money to the cause of God, as others do. Of course he does, for he feels that he has to quiet his conscience and to keep up his good repute. But does he care for the glory of God? By no means. If he did, he would give more than money. His heart's prayers would go up for the progress of the kingdom. 
Does he sigh and cry because of the sins of the times? Do you find him alone with God, pouring out his heart in anguish? Because even in his own family there are those that are not converted to God. Did you ever see in him a high and holy joy when sinners are converted? an exaltation because the kingdom of Christ is coming. Oh, no, he never rises to that. All the service of God is outward to him. In the core and heart of spiritual things, he has never entered, and he never can. The carnal mind, even when it is religious, is still enmity against God, and it is not reconciled to God, neither indeed can it be. There must be a spiritual mind created in the man. He must become a new creature in Christ Jesus before he can appreciate, understand, and enjoy spiritual things. To come back to where we started, ye must be born again. We must be born of the Spirit. We must receive a supernatural life by being quickened from our death in sin. We cannot bear the fruit of the Spirit till we have the inner life of the Spirit. Ishmael will be Ishmael, and Isaac will be Isaac. As the man is, such will his conduct be. The man of sight and reason and human power may do his best as Ishmael did, but only the child of the promise will rise to the life and walk of faith as Isaac did. Hard lines, says one. Sometimes it is a great blessing to have those hard lines drawn, and drawn very straight, too. By this means we may be set on the right track for eternity. One said the other day to a friend of mine, I once went to hear Mr. Spurgeon, and when I went into the tabernacle, if you had asked me about myself, I should have judged that I was as religious a man as ever lived in Newington, and as good a man, certainly as ever made part of a congregation. But all this was reversed when I heard the gospel that day. I came out of the place with every feather plucked out of me. I felt myself the most wretched sinner that could be on the face of the earth. And I said, I will never go to hear that man again, for he has spoiled me altogether. Yes, he said, but that was the best thing that could have happened to me. I was made to look away from myself and all that I could do to God and to his omnipotent grace, and to understand that I must pass under my Creator's hand again, or I could never see his face with joy. I hope my reader knows this truth for himself, a solemn truth it is, even as first of all God made Adam so must he make us over again, or else we can never bear his image, nor behold his glory. We must come under the influence of the promise, and live upon the promise, or our lives will never be guided by right, nor directed to right ends 